What's up? My name is Gunner, owner of Bramer Customs Flies. Um, I'm going to be tying a pike fly today. It's easy, it's simple, it's probably been thought of before. It's not uh, too original, but it works, it's effective, um, and it's easy. So hopefully I explain some things. I doubt I will, at least accurately, but at least it should be entertaining. But throwing your thread on, doesn't really matter where. Bringing it back to probably the barb. Going to cut that off. I got four hackles picked out. Um, they're about, probably going to cut them at five inches long. I evened up all the tips. We're just looking. Probably get as much as we can out of these guys. Some about like that. Coming off the back of that hook. I'm going to tie these in first. I'll explain why in a second not that it probably matters that much I'm just clearing off the butts pulling off the fibers leaving about a centimeter on there I'm gonna tie these in all at one time I'm gonna pair them up and I'm gonna have the natural curves facing away from each other so it's gonna make a little V I like to do this on my pike and musky flies as you can see like that it makes a little V as just a wee bit more movement to the back there. So we're tying all these barbs on at one time, making sure they're right on top. So this part of the barb, barb stem, whatever you want to call it, probably a stem, um, it's actually going to run flat this way because the, it runs basically all the way through the feather flat like this. So when you peel it off, if you tie it in on top, all your feathers stay nice and vertical go straight back. Nothing gets tangled or twists or anything fancy on you. Pretty simple that way. Nice and quick. Gonna cut off some flash. What are we doing? We're doing a lemon head. Actually it's a chartreuse head. But we'll take some chartreuse holographic flash and then some holographic silver. Probably about five or six strands of each. Maybe a little less. Doesn't need to be that much. It's just something to throw in the tail. And we're going to even up these tips. And then we're going to start tapering the flash. This helps the flash move a little bit. Makes it a little bit more lifelike. So you just take the tips and you just pull them apart like this. Kind of get them all at a little bit different length. You don't want them all to be even. And then I'm going to tie this in with a V. So I'm going to wrap it around my thread. And the proportions that I'm trying to get, if you can see, are about 60 and 40. So it's not 50-50, it's 60-40-ish. You can kind of tie it in on the side and bring it up. Throw some thread over top here. And then I just use my thumb and my other hand to kind of just distribute it around. And then you put thread over top and she's good to go. Now I'm going to hit all this with super glue to make sure that no teeth get in here and tear this apart. But before I do, I'm going to make a series of thread dams. And the thread dams have a few purposes, but mainly it's for consistency so I can tie the same pike fly every single time. Um, it also helps me mentally picture where I'm going to put the bucktail stacks on the hook so that I don't crowd the front of the hook and make it really hard to work with when I get toward the, the end and I can kind of proportion everything better and just make it come together. So we're going to put a thread dam right here in the back right under the hook point and the reason why we're going to spin bucktail right here is because the bucktail is going to go back and it's going to encapsulate all this and it's going to stop this from wrapping around and catching under your hook and stopping your flash from getting tangled. So that's added benefit. More time fishing in the water, you know. Keep your fly wet. But the balls don't need to be that big or the thread dams don't need to be that big and they don't need to be that accurate. It's just a mental thing. Um, so if you don't want to use too much thread, you don't have to. This is kind of getting a little sloppy. There's a thread dam. I like to put one in the back. And then we're probably going to do a series of three up here in the front. So one right here in the middle. I 
not going to be reverse tying any bucktail today, which is pretty unusual, I think. Normally I, would, I do, but um, if this was a musky fly or something, I probably would reverse tie it. If I was going to articulate it, you know, I'd probably reverse tie the front. I'm trying to get more bulk out of this, but we're going to use just light, sparse, spun bucktail all facing the same direction. And that'll probably get her done. So let me see what we got here. I'm using a fish mask on the on the head of this. It's a number eight five. That's actually going to be perfect. So we're just going to do one in the back, one right here, and one right here. So if you can kind of see how that's all spaced out, it's a little sloppy, but it'll work just fine. A few hatch it, half hitches, cut that off. Um, and then I'm going to hit this with super glue. I started out using uh, just some Flymaster Plus 210 denier thread. Um, yeah, it's what my local shop has. It's what I like to tie with. But when we go to our bucktail, I'm going to switch up to Vivis 200 denier. Um, it's a gel spun thread, super slick. It's going to allow that hair to rotate and spin around and evenly distribute around my hook here. So that all looks good. Let that set real quick, get some coffee in my veins. So when you're working with bucktails, this one's been heavily abused, but the bucktail at the bottom tends to have more air trapped in the fibers, so that air allows you to compress it and it flares out like deer hair. Towards the tip, a lot less air, doesn't flare out very well. Um, I'm using what I got. I got some nice bucktails kind of on reserve for orders and I'm kind of just using the crap for myself. <laughs> um, but. So that's all you need to know. It's got under hair in it. It's got um, some shorter fibers. We're going to be pulling those out as you'll see. You can use a comb if you want. You can just use your fingers if you want. Whatever happens. But we're going to take a medium sized clump. I don't probably do anything bigger than a pencil. It doesn't need to be because it's going to be a series. There's going to be three clumps on here, right? So if you look at that, not super big diameter, probably half a pencil. And we're going to grab the tips, bucktail, kind of flick out your underfur that you don't need. I don't even have no thread on the hook. I'm getting very far ahead of myself. That's what happens when you make a video. You're not paying attention. You're not trying to fly. You're making a video. Put that down. Get out of here. So this is the Vivas. Start that up top. Doesn't matter that much. That's all dry. Good to go. When you cut your GSB, your gel spun, um, it's really slick and it's hard. It won't really cut if you just kind of like do this. It won't do anything. So you got to make a V pull and just kind of wedge cut it. And you just shove your scissors in there and that'll cut that off. Bring this back. Try to leave your thread dams nice and open. Throw a half hitch in the last one. Good looking. There we go. Now we can do something with the bucktail. I'm going to even up the butts a little bit. You kind of stack them against the back of your hand like a hair stacker. And then we're going to spin this. So we're going to put about two loose wraps. Okay, three. Three loose wraps. Make sure your thread is in the thread dam. Don't go outside of that. You're going to put light pressure with your left hand. So we switched bobbin hands. You're going to push straight down on top with your thumb. This is going to move the hair to the sides and then you're going to pinch the sides which will move the hair down to the bottom. So now we have 360 degrees of bucktail and then you can check your butts, your bucktail butts will kind of show you what has more hair and what doesn't have enough hair and you can just kind of pinch it around and even it up. And then we're going to throw in one more wrap and then I'm going to support my hook so I don't pull it out of the vise and straight pull down and just kind of let that hair flare. Some of it will spin, some of it won't. Not a big deal. And then we're going to catch all this. Throw a few wraps on the butts. 
with some good tugs, make sure that hair is not spinning anymore, right? It's all in there no matter how hard I pull. Brush these butts back and work your thread through them. You can kind of just wiggle it through them, try not to catch it in any. And then we'll just do like three or four wraps and a half hitch. And that's good to go. Clear this out of there. If you want, if, you, if this spins a little bit more than mine did, and it gets caught around the hook, you just take your scissors and you can kind of just peel it on either side of your hook bend. And then I cut my butts off. I don't like the butts. They don't have a purpose in life. Now if you were tying a T-bone or something, or if you were using uh, the new body tubing from Flyman, this is when you tie it in, super glue, push it on, tie it down, flare it back. I like to use that stuff, but I kind of feel like I'm stealing it if I try to sell it like that. So I just straight tie these ones. On the pipe fly, it doesn't bother me that it's not super bulky. It's kind of nice, narrow taper, dodges left and right, it swims really well. The musky ones, I'll just I reverse tie and try to get more bulk, and I like to add length to the feathers. I'll probably pick out some slopping feathers, like um, Whiting's got like a 10 to 14 inch slopping packs that they sell at my local shop. And I'll use those, try to get about two more inches out of these feathers so that it all proportions back a little bit better. But we're going to bring this thread right back up into this next thread dam, half hitch that. I'm going to hit this body with some super glue here. Make sure all that stays the way it is. Durability. I didn't like super glue. I never used super glue. I thought it was wussy. But. When you're chasing toothies, it does not make sense not to use it, so you know. And if you got a rotary device and you're distributing super glue like that, watch out because you will pull your bobbin up into your hook and super glue it to the hook. It happens more often than you'd think. Okie dokie. Back to work. So taking another, I don't know, a little bit more than the back one here, I'm looking for probably three quarters of a pencil. I don't want to do too much just because it'll be unnecessarily bulky. Something I do like about this fly, so this is a 6 uh Universal Predator X from Partridge. It's got a longer shank than I'd normally tie on. I'd normally tie on, um, I think it's an SP-11 uh, Gamagatsu, it's a saltwater hook. Um, but the spacing that I can get between the bucktail stacks, right, this spacing really helps the material to breathe. You get a lot of water movement in there and stuff. It's a lot better than just stacking your bucktail on top of each other super tight because you just get a single clump of bucktail. And this kind of helps your fly taper out a little bit. You get your length and your bulk kind of the same thing. And there's no point in putting anything on the shank anyway because it's all going to get covered up with the bucktail. So. I should stack these up a little bit, clean these up a little bit. You can cut your tips if you don't want to stack them. It doesn't really matter. You can stack them and cut your tips, whatever you want to do. It's just nice and clean. So, three wraps, a little bit of thread tension, switching bobbin hands. It's trying to spin on me a little bit, which is all right. Right on top, pinch the sides, right? Now it's distributed, kind of check it out from the bottom, make sure your butts are all even that's how you pre-check this just looking at your butts support this so it doesn't get yanked out and just cinch her down now some of this got trapped under the hook right I was trying to tell you that before you just take your scissors and just help it around and then you're good to go a few more wraps help that flare it's not going to flare that much because it's not it's the bucktail about halfway up that bucktail because I don't have a choice. <laughs> well, I do have a choice, but I'm saving that. The good stuff for customers. Don't want to be greedy. Trimming off these butts. These butts don't really do anything except absorb water. So there's no point in having them there. Sad day. Waste of material. Now, um, so like if I was doing a fire tiger blend or something, I would choose like a yellow, orange, and then a black stack, or 
If you wanted to do a rainbow trout, you could do like white, pink, and green. This is a lemon head. I guess our chartreuse head, I already messed that one up. So the back of the fly is mostly white. I got a little green flash in there. If you want to add flash, I would add it on this stack. You kind of have this little gap right here. Flare it out over the back. I'm not going to do it on this one. Um, but you just V-style it, probably do 50-50, and then I'd trim it off about the length of the bucktail. You don't want it coming back too much and messing with your tail. Um, so we're going to switch bucktail colors now to chartreuse. I'm going to wrap up into this thread dam here and half hitch to lock that in place. I actually have a really good chartreuse bucktail. Very nice. So we're going to get some nice long green fibers. Probably too long. So I'm probably going to trim these butts a little bit because I don't want this. Well, we'll see. Give me a second. I got to think about this. <laughs> Basically, when you come forward, you want your longest bucktail on the back and then you want your shortest bucktail on the front. Obviously not like superiorly short, just shorter. So it just helps build proportion into your fly better. So I'm not going to put this whole green stack in there because it'd be a little bit crazy. But I kind of like the way that looks. So I'm still going to clean out these smaller fibers that we don't need. All this under fur. Um, the under fur has a tendency to cut your thread if you don't take it out. The smaller fibers not so much, they're just unnecessarily bulky that you don't need. So I cleaned up my butts, cut my bucktail so it's the right length. If you were going to reverse tie any of them, I would do this front one, reverse tie it to get the bulk up in the front and leave this nice kind of slick taper in the back. We're just going to come in and catch this like always. Three wraps, pressure, thumb on the front. If you reverse tie, I still distribute it the same way. Still put my thumb on the front, pinch the sides, and then check the butts. Keeps everything right where it needs to be, and then flare that out. That compressed relatively nicely. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Flyman fish mask when we get to it. It's coming up. Just preparing you. If you're getting a little bored of the repetitiveness, hang on. There's some information coming. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to match this top color bucktail with some craft fur and I'm going to reverse tie the craft fur and then use the fish mask to bring all the craft fur back over the bucktail. I got that one from Daniel Holm on uh, fly tying the EU or EDU I think. He's a Danish guy. He's an awesome guy. He ties sweet flies. He's always happy. He makes me happy. But normally I would tie in some lateral scales and we're going to tie in lateral scales. I'm just not going to do them right away because if I tie them in before I reverse tie the craft fur, <laughs> I have a tendency of cutting them when I trim the craft fur butts. And that's frustrating because then they're not reverse tied and they can get pulled out and stuff. So craft fur first. Extra select craft fur chartreuse matches that. Um, it just adds a little bit of life. It adds a little bit of, um, I don't know, water drag, helps slow the front of the fly down. It helps kind of clean up and bulk up this front a little bit. It's a little bit shorter actually. It's pretty close to the length of the bucktail, but it has shorter fibers mixed in. So it's not all just length, 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 but it kind of builds some bulk up in the front. And it's a nice, lively material. It looks really well. It swims really well. It looks and swims really well. So you can kind of just comb forward, right? Get a nice little selection here. We're going to distribute this all the way around the hook, so I actually need quite a bit more probably than you think you do. And if you think about it like a hairstylist, it's a lot easier to grab a row of craft fur than it is to grab a chunk. You can cut a lot closer to the base of this material and use it more efficiently when you kind of grab it like this at the tips. So I cut all this off. It's kind of difficult to work with right now and you're going to want to fold it over top of itself, kind of like reel it in and get all your butts together. 
even though this is a synthetic fiber, it still has like under hair and directional hairs. And it's kind of weird, so it has fur in it. And we're going to comb that out because we don't need that. So we just combed all that out, kind of cleaned it up. And then we're going to take it and we're just going to kind of loosely fold it around this hook shank and we're going to use thread torque to bring it all the way around so it's a nice loose wrap and boom we have 360 degree coverage of Kraffer. Now normally I clip these butts right um, be careful that you don't clip them super short because when you reverse this if there's nothing here the head kind of collapses on itself and then the buck tear flares out and it looks a little funny so I like to leave that kind of in there at a weird, uh, I like to leave it bulky or even with the bucktail butts. I don't trim it super close to my thread. Kind of clean that up, looks good. And then we're going to put in our lateral scales. I like lateral scales, good flash, good flash. Normally I use, I think it's opal, it's kind of like translucent. Um, I kind of accidentally placed an order for silver. Um, fish don't seem to mind. And it contrasts really well against the white bodies. It's a little bold. If you're not bold, let me know. We'll put the opal back on. It's much more translucent. But we're just V-tying this. Bring it up wherever you want. I like, uh, I do 50-50 on these ones. Um, if I'm doing the musky fly, I'll do 60-40, get some more length out of it. So just tie that in right there on the side. Good to go. Um, you don't need to tie it down super tight because what we're about to do, so I'm going to throw a clip on here. We're going to put super glue on the thread itself right here. And then we're going to use that to kind of secure this thread together and weld it all into place. And that way you don't have to half hitch or uh, whip finish anything. And it's going to help protect this thread from any teeth. Actually, it doesn't matter because the fish mask is going to cover it. But. So now you're good to go. That's all going to set up. And what I just used was the gel, um, gel super glue. Doesn't matter which one you use for that. But I like to use the gel when I do my eyes. Kind of, it's a little bit more forgiving. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to reverse the craft fur with the fish mask. So you kind of take your fingers, flare all this out. That is nicely distributed. And then I wanted to save room for a thread dam up here, which we have. About the perfect amount of room for a nice thread dam. I used to super glue up here and just push this on and you get it right tight to the eye. But the super glue dries and it kind of makes a nasty looking head. Um, doesn't give you this nice clear shiny head it kind of makes it not pretty looking so I, I wasn't a fan of that so I started doing thread dams um, so you just hold this back get your thread on there Just going to build a nice cone, kind of going back and forth until you got some pressure on there and the head doesn't want to rotate really. It's a little bit more space than normal, but that's okay. So, this is a nice, it's like a seven inch pike fly, it's not super big, not super bulky. Um, you know, I do have decently sized fish here, but most of them, when you're fishing for pike, it's probably going to be in that 25 to 35 inch range. You're not going to get too many 40 plus or anything, and if you do, you're fishing pretty good, so. I don't know, this is kind of like your all around fish catcher. When you're looking for your numbers day, or searching, or it's just good, bright colors. It kind of has this left to right jerk bait style to it it's good looking I got a lot of confidence in this fly which is important so we're just gonna hit this protect all that with some glue 
I'm going to throw the eyes on using the gel. They're 8.5 millimeter eyes to match the number 8.5 mask. You don't want too much glue or else it'll kind of seep around the outside of your eyes and it'll give it that weird kind of milky, tacky residue when it dries. I have a problem with my eyes falling on the ground and getting super glued to things, which is why I started putting the glue on the mask and not on the eyes. And I got this little trick from Andreas Anderson. You just stick the eyes to your hand and you know where they are and they're not falling off on the ground, doing something funny, getting eaten by your dog, whatever. Put that guy on there, good to go. I don't think this is important. Um, but I like the little triangles in the eyes to look forward. If you check out the package, the fish's eyes, the triangle points forward. Little things, little things, not harassing anybody. That's how I like to do it. It's not a big deal. Boom. Good to go. Done. Flashy tail, lateral lines, good taper. Has, it's not super bulky, but it has an appropriate amount of bulk for a bike flying, right? It's like the size of like... Uh, 14 husky jerk or something right it's about seven and a half inches long I tie them in hot heads lemon heads fire tiger black and purple blue whatever you want but I wanted to talk about the fish mask for a second before my video is over 26 minutes is a long time but when you look at the fish mask you can see that the sides are longer than the top right there's these little slots in the top and the bottom and I don't know if they designed them this way on purpose but what happens is the sides compress your bucktail. They pinch your bucktail and they make it vertically displaced, right? So it's taller on top and on bottom than it is on the sides. And that acts like a sail. If you ever watch like a Nicholas Bauer video and he's putting on a head, he'll cut the head vertically. He'll put like 15 millimeter eyes on there. And then it was, it was in Swedish. So I can only assume he was saying when it cuts through the water, that head acts like a sail and it works like a jerk bait and then it overcorrects and then it works like a jerk bait so you're just creating something that digs left and right and the fish masks do a very subtle job of that and it works perfectly so it's very easy very quick and it creates a nice jerk bait action on the fly that's kind of hard well it's not hard to get otherwise but it's this is very convenient to do um, so I don't know if they designed it that way. It also works that way on the fish uh, skulls. They're designed the same way. So it gives you a nice vertical kind of displacement. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Pike fly, seven and a half inches. Not super big, not super flashy. Uh, good contrast. Can do just about any colors. Um, easily castable, by the way, on like an eight weight. Um, you could probably even cast it on a seven weight, but I fish it on a nine and that's just because I'm fishing for pike and you can cast this all day long. This does not hold a lot of water. Um, it's nice and light and you can cast it a pretty dang long ways. Um, so yeah, check it out. Check out my website www.streamersbygunner.com. I'll leave a link in the video description and um, let me know what you think. If you got some comments, share them. Thanks. See you.